and welcome to the Pipe Peony Academy. I'm Dara with the Pipe Peony Academy. And today we are going to kick off some holiday designs that I'm going to be showing you guys throughout these next couple weeks. For today, we are going to be starting on pine branches. I'm going to show you how to make buttercream pine branches. So today we are making the pine branch. This is everything you're gonna need to make the pine branch. Let's start with the piping tips. So you're gonna need your Wilton 16, which looks like that, little, little star shape tip. And then you're gonna need a small round tip. I'm gonna be using a Wilton one today, but you can also uh, do perfectly fine with an Attico 00 or a Wilton two. I would not go any higher than a Wilton 2. So you're going to want an Attico 00, which oftentimes I will use, but for today I'm going to use the Wilton 1. I kind of interchange them with this one. Um, you can use an, a Wilton 1 or you can use a Wilton 2. Don't go any higher than a 2. They might be just a little bit too thick. You're going to need some parchment paper to pipe your pine branches onto. These, uh, these flowers, not flowers, but pine branches, are pretty similar to the best accent flower that's under the other flower series. Um, they're two dimensional really, and then they're gonna go on the parchment paper. You're gonna need an extra large piping nail as well as your block, your piping block. And then here I have three colors, but you really only need two. I'm going to color um, my branch. I'm gonna give it a little bit of color variety. So I have an additional color of brown here. I have like a very dark brown and then a medium, a mid-tone brown. And then I have my green for my leaves and this is my evergreenish color. And then I'm using here if you wanna make it. Um, <clears throat> you're also going to need some place to put your pine branches. So I'm using a pretty plate, but you can use um, your, uh, your containers, you can use a cookie sheet, whatever works best for you. And of course, you're going to need a cup to fill your piping bags, and you're going to need definitely a wet towel. I think that's everything. Let me just do a quick scan. Yep, I think we got everything. Okay, so let's get to, actually, I'm going to show you how to color, how to mix your colors, very simple, into a bag so you can get a little color variety if you are using two different colors of browns. So that's going to be next. Okay, so here I have my three colors, and then I have my dark brown, my mid-tone brown, and then I have my evergreenish. And first I'm going to fill the brown bag. Now I'm going to grab my Wilton 16 because this is going to be for my branch. Just stuff it in your cup, open it up. We'll put the green back there since we're not going to be using them just yet. This is a very, very simple coloring technique to give you some variety within your piping color. All you do is just take um, the amount of coloring. First, give your bowls a little mix. Mine have been sitting here for a little while, so I'm gonna give it just a little, little mix. I'm gonna try to clean it off and use the same one for my light brown, hoping to not turn it into a mid-tone brown. I'm gonna give it a slight mix, and all you do Think about how much of each color you want to show through. I don't want very much brown to show through. So I'm just gonna take a just a healthy scoop and just kind of smear it in there. And I'm gonna mix it just enough to get a little bit of variety in there. A little bit of swirls, kind of marbling effect. And that's good. Then I'm gonna grab it, pull it out, scoop it, and just toss it in my bag. And that's gonna be enough to kind of to make your color just a little bit more multi-dimensional instead of a flat brown. I'm also gonna have a little bit of um, dark brown in there too, which will kind of just give it a little, make it dynamic, make it a little bit more dimensional. Now, if I, I could also do that for my green. I'm not doing that today, but you certainly can. All you would do is take a bowl of uncolored buttercream, a very you know small bowl, and then you would just scoop it out and throw it into the uncolored buttercream to create two different shades. You'd have a lighter shade and then you'd have a darker shade and you'd repeat that process that I just did for the brown. So if you wanna do that, feel free before you move on to the piping. Otherwise, follow me to the piping because we are ready to go. Let's start piping. 
Okay, we're ready to go. I've got my Wilton 1, I've got my Wilton 16, and all my other accoutrements. Um, it, you know, remember you can use an Attico 00, a Wilton 1, or a Wilton 2 for these. I'm using the Wilton 2. I've got my plate, I've got my uh, parchment paper, my wet towel, my piping block and nail, not pictured, my fun holiday festive coffee cup. I absolutely love using coffee cups that are seasonal. It just adds a little special effect to my morning. So, all right, let's get started here. Grab your Wilton 16 and just make a little dab on your piping nail to kind of adhere your parchment paper down, smear it around a little bit. My squares are nice and big. I like that. I like when they kind of flop over the sides a little bit. I feel like I've got lots of room for opportunity. <laughs> it makes me feel good when they're bigger. Sometimes they get in the way of your wrist though and you do need to give them a haircut. There's potential for that in this episode. I may need to give this guy a haircut, but for now, I'm gonna let him live his best life. Okay, so first what you're gonna do is you're going to pick up your Wilton 16 and you have to make your branch first. Now don't make a straight line because it's just not gonna look natural. You wanna put a little bend in it, a little curve. So I like to kind of do, you know, kind of a C. A little C or a U, just something that gives it a little bit more life versus, you know, just this that's not gonna look as real as this. And you don't have to make it as long. The length is entirely up to you. I did a little bit of a long one here, which is gonna take me a little bit of time to fill. These pine branches can be a labor of love depending on how long you make them. So if you wanna make them on the shorter side because you're making a lot of them or because you don't are short on time, make them shorter. Make them, you know, make them like this. That's totally fine. Mine is on the longer side here. So just so you know, you don't have to make it that long unless that's what you're going for. And also it's good to vary the lengths too because not all pine branches are exactly the same length. So it's good to vary length, vary size. So pick up your Wilton, your Attico 00, your Wilton 1, your Wilton 2, whatever you're using. And what you wanna do is you wanna create layers of pine needles and you want to make sure your wrist is not pulling out. I don't want it to look, oh, I got a clog here. I don't want it to look like this necessarily. I want it coming straight out perpendicular to my pine branch. I want it to work with my pine branch. So I want it to kind of go up versus out. So you want it to tilt up a little bit so your wrist positioning, instead of being like this, instead of being perpendicular to your branch, you just wanna tilt it up a little bit. So you're kind of at like one o'clock, maybe two o'clock instead of three o'clock. Don't be at three o'clock, be at like one o'clock when you're pulling up. Now that gets a little bit trickier as you move over to the, um, to the bended pine branches a little bit you kind of have to twirl and adjust as you go. So I'm gonna move my wrist to about two o'clock and I'm gonna start at the top. And I start at the top because I want to cover the previous um, pine of where I started before. I wanna cover the previous root because the roots can get a little bit messy. So I want to kind of just gloss over that with an extra or with the, with the following pine needle, if that makes sense. So I can cover it if I need to, if it starts to look a little messy. So in terms of length, you can make them as long or as short as you want. Um, they are tricky to maneuver your wrist, to, to maneuver your wrist a little bit without jamming your piping tip into the pine branch. And if you do do that, it's okay. Um, my hand is not the steadiest either, so it is a little, um, it can get a little tricky to kind of lay it on there perfectly. And if one isn't perfect, just come back over top and just add another pine needle. So let me get you closer so you can see what I've got going on here. So as you can see, these here are a little messy. Um, you know, they didn't lay perfectly flat against the pine needle and they're kind of just blob like. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in. I'm gonna add another row to this side. So I'm gonna make sure my 
piping tip is clean. And I'm just going to come in and kind of, I'm shaking a little bit because I'm at kind of a strange angle to get it on camera, but I'm just gonna come in and kind of lay one over top. I'm just gonna add another layer. You can always add pine needles to fix, you know, any weird spots. As many or as few as you like. Maybe your branch is sparse. Maybe your branch is full. Maybe you've got long pine needles. Maybe you've got short pine needles. Maybe you've got very full pine needles. It's completely up to you. It's up to your design. This over here is kind of, they're going different directions. I'm just going to insert my piping tip right about here and just add a couple more. And I'm just gonna go through and fill it out just a little bit. Make sure my piping tip is clean as I pull out. Okay, so now I'm gonna reverse it over to the other side. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm kind of still at the one o'clock position and I'm just twirling to get my pine needles facing the proper direction, facing up a little bit. I'm just gonna add a couple over here, starting at the top and working my way down. As I go, I'm twirling to get the angle so I don't have to change my wrist position. And if some don't attach, that's okay. You have to scrape a little bit along the branch to get proper attachment. But it's okay because you end up covering most of it anyway. Covering most of the pine branch, that is. So I'm going to come back over here, and I'm just going to add a couple more. I could stop there if I wanted to. But I just want to add a couple more here and there, cover a couple weird spots, add a couple pine needles, longer pine needles to match the rest. At the bottom, my pine needles got a little short. Okay, as I'm looking at it, stop, look at it, check your work. I'm looking at it, to me, it looks a little flat here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go in and just add kind of one more pine needle. My wrist is in the two o'clock position. I'm gonna add a couple more pine needles and I'm going to kind of close my wrist up a little bit just so I can make them stand. And the beauty with this is that they actually get easier as your buttercream gets meltier. <laughs> like as your buttercream melts in the bag from the heat of your hand, they get easier to pipe and they get you get faster at piping them as your buttercream becomes softer. There will come a point where your buttercream is just too soft and you have to change it out of your bag, but you should be able to get a bunch of pine needles in before that happens. Okay, so that looks good. So I'm gonna transfer this to my plate and I'm going to pop it in the freezer. And I'm going to freeze it until it's nice and hard and ready for me to place on a cake or a cupcake. It shouldn't take long, probably, I would guess 15 minutes, um, but you know, freeze as long as you think you need to. I'm gonna make a shorter one, kind of going in a different direction. And here's actually how I do it. I will put as many as I can on one parchment paper, all with a little bend, give it that natural flow, and then start working. Start at your top, hold your wrist at your one or two o'clock position, and just start going. And if you don't make buttercream attachment, don't worry, don't get too upset, just keep going, just go back. If you need to wipe your little piece off on your, on your wet towel, do that. Don't be afraid to kind of dig into your pine, to your branch a little bit, that's okay. I'm gonna come back on this side and add a couple more. You can make them longer if you like. Make them shorter, longer, whatever your design calls for. Okay, I'm gonna come over here. Same thing. It's harder for me on the inside because I can't really see where I'm attaching it to, so I'm going in a little bit blind, but that's okay. If any come out looking, you know, just not the way I wanted them to, I just go back in and add more pine needles.
My wrist, again, is still at the one, two o'clock position. It doesn't really change much beyond that. My twirling is doing everything for me. I'm gonna come back over. I'm just gonna add a couple. I'm gonna close my wrist a little so I can get a couple pine needles that stand up a little bit more so they're not all completely flat. It's good to change your wrist positioning as you're going, meaning, you know, first you start out with an open wrist and then you start to close it. Your palm starts to face the wall more. So when your wrist positioning is open, your palm is facing the ceiling. But when your wrist positioning is closed more, it's facing the wall to either your left or right, depending on which hand you're using. So when I first started out, my wrist was pretty open. My palm was facing the ceiling. But as I go, and I wanna add more dimension to my two-dimensional flower, well, pine branch, I close my wrist positioning and I face it towards the wall that's on my left hand side because I'm a righty. If you're a lefty, you're facing it towards the wall on your right hand side. I had to follow through there with emotion because left telling talking about left and right doesn't always come naturally for me. I don't know why my brain just kind of doesn't allow me to compute what's <laughs> which side I'm on. Okay. Okay, I've switched to my Wilton 2 so you can see what those look like. I will not be switching to an Attico 00 because my Attico 00 is not clean right now. I was using it yesterday to make my little pre-piping demo pieces. So, okay, so now my wrist, one, two o'clock position. As you can see, these are bigger. I would not go any larger than a two. These are much, much bigger. So you probably would be able to do them quicker, although they're not as natural looking. So it's completely up to you. It's what you have time for and what you want to do. They're a little bit easier to plop down. So I would say the Wilton 2 is more of um, like an intermediate version for this. If you're struggling with the Wilton 1, the Wilton 2 is probably a good way to go. Definitely don't move up to Wilton 3 because that will just be too large. Okay, so there the, there's the Wilton 2. Make a couple that are you know, protruding up, so close your wrist positioning a little bit. Okay, let's move on to this one over here. Let's do this guy. I'm gonna just squirt a little bit underneath so I can get better parchment paper attachment to my piping nail. And I'm going to continue. I'm going to start at the top, wrist in the two o'clock position. My wrist is open right now. It's facing the ceiling. And don't get mad if they don't get perfectly, if they don't come perfectly pointing out because it's very difficult. As you can see, mine, I've got a couple little, little squigglies here. I plopped it down. I applied too much pressure. Uneven pressure on my end caused a little, you know, couple little squigglies to come out there. I'm not upset about it. I'm not worried about it. I'm not gonna, you know, struggle to really fix it much. All I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna throw it out because this was my effort here, my effort and my time put into this. So I'm not gonna, you know, throw it out out of frustration. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna finish this side. I'm gonna come back and say, okay, now I'm gonna cover you guys. So be easy on yourself, be kind to yourself. If they aren't laying properly, just lay some over top. Everything is fixable. It's just, are you of the mind frame that everything is fixable? Put yourself in that mind frame. Think to yourself, this is completely fixable. It's completely, you know, I don't need to go to a lot of effort to make it look better. I just have to add a couple more pine needles, give it a little bit of dimension and boom. See, this one is a little bit longer than all the rest of them, but that's okay. It doesn't need to be perfect. There's nothing in art that is absolutely perfect. What looks perfect is when you put the pieces together. All your imperfect little pieces put together make art. There's no such thing as perfect art. There's just how do you put the pieces of the puzzle together to make the picture, the overall picture. Each individual piece does not matter. It does not matter. It's how do they look together. That's what matters. So give yourself grace if your pine needles, you know, aren't coming out exactly as you wanted them. Because I guarantee if you put two of these pine needles on a cupcake with a little flower, it's going to look absolutely beautiful. Okay, 
And as you're going, you want to make sure to just um, preserve a little bit of the brown of the stem because that's what makes it look very natural. If you wanted to, you could go in and you could just add a couple to just hide away the stem a little bit. It would give you the look of, you know, a different angle of looking at the, um, of looking at the pine needle. So if you want to do that, I personally like to leave a little bit of the branch exposed to give it, you know, that natural, that natural flow of looking at it from face down. If you're looking at it from the side, maybe you want to cover it completely. Um, the amount of pine branch that you cover is completely up to you. So I'm going to transfer this over to my paper. I'm going to pop it into the freezer. I'm going to freeze for about 15 minutes. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to, these are warm, so I'm not going to do it, but I'm just going to pull it off of the wrapper and I'm going to apply it to a cupcake. These need a little bit of buttercream attachment to, um, to hold their shape. So, you know, make sure you kind of prop it up against something else. You don't want to have too much of it left hanging. So don't, don't, don't give it a cliffhanger. Don't like put it on your cupcake here and then the rest is left out to just kind of hang because it will droop a little bit. You want to have a flower have it just resting somewhere on the cupcake. You want to support it about until, I would say up to here. This amount shouldn't weigh it down and shouldn't droop it, but you do want to have at least half of it supported, something underneath, whether it's just a squeeze of buttercream, a leaf, um, a swirl, a petal, a flower, whatever, just a, a blackberry. Oh, that would look so beautiful. Actually, black is going to be um, very popular this Christmas. Black is a trending color. If you look in magazines like Pottery Barn or, you know, any, um, any trendy clothing line or furniture decor, you'll see black is trending. So blackberries would be a great accent piece on a cupcake. If you want to pop a blackberry underneath there to support it, that'll do the trick. So, all right, there they are. Boom. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, I do enjoy making them for you. So there you have it, buttercream pine branches. How do yours look? Post pictures on the Facebook group, the Pipeene Academy. And of course, if you need any help at all, post your questions on there too. I am happy to help you guys. Thank you for watching this class.